Hello dear friends, how are you all doing? My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is an extremely belated November-December wrap-up. I am still recovering from my sickness. If you watched my last vlog, I'll link it down below. I am still having a sore throat. I can hardly sleep. Um, this is like the first day that I've had a semi-normal voice and I've just been really wanting to film this video, but I'm gonna do things a little different in talking about the books that I read in November and December. I know it's such a late video, but I really want to talk about these books because some of them have become my new favorites. Some of them were in my favorites of 2021. Some of them are new all-time favorites, so I feel like they deserve time to be gushed over. But I was really inspired by my favorite booktuber, CJ Reads. If you're not following her, I'm gonna link her channel down below. Please follow because she's one of my favorite booktubers. Love her sense of humor, love her vlogs, love her, the literature she picks up and chooses. Yeah, so if you haven't followed CJ Reads, definitely recommend it. But she did this awesome thing in talking about, I think it was her favorite books of 2021, where she gave like a very brief synopsis and then talked about what the book feels like while you're reading it or the atmosphere or whatever and I love that so much. I feel like that's something I already do when I describe the books that I read, like what it feels like in metaphors or similes. Because I'm trying to keep things brief for my sanity and for my sore throat, that's what we're going to be doing today. And then um, she also included like if you're a fan of or if you liked X books or X media you might enjoy this book. So I'm gonna try and do that today because I was really inspired by that. I feel like that's something that I already kind of include when I talk about my books and I go on longer tangents with, with each book, but this will just be a more structured way of doing it. So this is all 100% crediting CJ Reads, totally 100% inspired by CJ Reads. So thank you, CJ, for inspiring this way and for helping me reduce the amount of talking I'm gonna do instead of going elaborately into plot. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm really excited because just the first book here is one of my new like all-time favorite books and it was 100% my favorite book of November and that is Dreamside by Graham Joyce. I need to set my coffee down. Dreamside, Graham Joyce. This is a book that follows four people, two lads, two lasses, and it bounces between their university days and kind of more present day when they're in their early mid-30s. At university they were a part of this group that was all about lucid dreaming. It was like a study group and the four of these students were able to lucid dream together and end up in this place that they created in their dreams called Dreamside where they would conduct these experiments to see what they're able to do in a dreaming state and then it bounces to present day where somebody has reopened Dreamside and you find out like throughout the book that like sinister things have happened. They closed down Dreamside. They don't want anyone revisiting it, but somebody has reopened it and started this chain of lucid dreams again. And they can't discern reality from dreams. This book really does feel like when you're dreaming about your morning routine and you feel like you're awake. It also felt like walking to a completely desolate park in the wintertime. And it also felt like when you were younger walking in the middle of the street at night and it's foggy and the street lamps are on but you're completely alone and it's quiet. It's very beautiful, dark academia, very dynamic and interesting characters. Loved it. Five stars. Um, books or media that I would compare this to. The Rose Variations by Marisha Chamberlain and The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So. Dreamside, Graham Joyce, absolutely loved it. So atmospheric, intellectual, university, very dark contents though. So a lot of trigger warnings in this one that were really unexpected for me. Be cautious going into it, but five stars. I loved, I loved this vibe. I would love to reread this. Next we have Cabo de Gata by Eugene Rouge. Um, this is translated by Anthea Bell from German. This is about an unnamed narrator man who leaves a failing relationship and travels to this very deserted, isolated, tiny town in Spain. Uh, he's just completely alone. There's like no dialogue. Very quiet, very introspective, very routine based. Talks a lot about isolation and loneliness. And um, this book felt like if you're on a beach and you went there to find like 
meaning or purpose or solace and you just wanted to go somewhere alone and then you just watch like one bug crawling on the ground or like a hermit crab in the sand and you realize you're not even thinking about yourself anymore <laughs> and you haven't quite achieved like what you intended to. My face is like turning red. I'm stifling so many coughs right now. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> God, my eyes are watering. <laughs> This also feels like when you're so lonely you start talking to your pets and telling them about your day and it also kind of felt like looking at a mountain i don't know why like a swiss alp <laughs> can that be singular a swiss one single swiss alp <laughs> i would compare this to it's been a long time since i've read it but like the stranger by albert camus and snow by betsy howie <laughs> Very quiet, very tiny, very introspective and sad. Cabo de Gata, I gave this three or four stars. One single tear <laughs> from coughing. Watch it roll down my face. <laughs> I'm trying, friends, I'm trying. <laughs> Am I pushing myself too hard here? I just really want to talk about these books. Next we have The Snowman by Joe Nesbo. We have a serial killer, women going missing snowman showing up a detective trying to piece it all together this felt like spilling coffee all over your important work documents <laughs> like trying to sop it up with other work documents <laughs> uh, this felt like black like knee length trench coats and carrying a black briefcase in a snowy Metropolis. I don't know if I can keep going, friends. I'm so sorry, I can't keep going. I didn't really like this. Like two or three stars, not my favorite. Supposed to be a thriller. I didn't really like it. I'm gonna, hopefully I'll film the rest of this a little bit later. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm back. It's been a few hours. I have some cold, now cold tea. Um, I've rested my throat. I've chugged a bunch of water. I would like to continue and see how we can fair into this. I just really want to do this video. I really want to talk about these books and we'll see how it goes. So if you've made it this far, thank you. I feel like my my delirious fog fever brains. Um, so I hope I I hope I hope you're enjoying this video. That's all I can say. I did want to circle back because I forgot to mention that the snowman by Joe Nesbo is translated from Norwegian by Don Bartlett, translated work. And now we can continue with the remainder of the books. This is the last book that I read in November, and that is The Dark Hills Divide, which is the Land of Elion book series. This is book one by Patrick Carmen. This follows a young girl who's the daughter of like a kind of a ruler, like a governor kind of thing. They travel to a summer home which is this giant castle and they live in this world where everything is walled off by a giant wall and she goes and explores over the wall what is hiding out there so this is like a children's fantasy this book feels like sunbathing in a forest and listening to squirrels scamper up the trees with their tiny little nails. It feels like holding and like crackling into a fresh baked baguette. It feels like a lukewarm cup of tea. So it's just the right amount of like, it's gonna warm you up and make you feel better. I would compare this book to the vibes of kind of like Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt with the writing style. It's very simplistic, but it still has a good amount of description and coziness with plot. I mean, just physically this book with the deckled edges just feels like a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. At the time of reading this, I loved it, but since reading it, I, I haven't thought about it once. Um, so I think this is more like a three or four star for me. So I don't know if I'll continue the series. I guess if I see any of the other books like floating around, I might like at a thrift store or something. Why not? Um, but yeah, there's that one. Just realized my notes are just sitting out here. So the first book that I read in December was Ahab's Return or The Last Voyage by Jeffrey Ford. This is a Moby Dick retelling about Captain Ahab if he has survived the Moby Dick journey and uh, he has returned to the mainland to rewrite his story because Ishmael wrote 
a book called Moby Dick and killed Captain Ahab in it because everyone believed him to be dead. So Captain Ahab enlists the help of a journalist to go track down Ishmael and rewrite his story, but then also to find Captain Ahab's family, his wife and his son. And then along the way, very magical realism things happen. This feels like reading by candlelight. It also felt like um, just a sea shanty song that you hear in a pub. And it feels like if you walk into that pub and it's all like creaky old wooden floors, and there's like something sticky on the floor. Like it's like fermented beer or apple cider and it's sticky and your shoes get stuck in it. And then it's also starting to attract some flies, but it's still romantic because you're in like a sea shanty pub. This book I would compare to The Church of Marvels by, oh no, I'm forgetting the author's name. I'm so sorry. I'll put it here, you know, and Unfortunately, it also felt a little bit like the Hourglass Factory by Lucy Ribchester. This started out really strong for me. I loved the detailed, decadent, flowery language. It felt so dark and eerie and sinister. The atmosphere was fantastic. And then it just moved way too quickly into a lot of plot and dialogue and just felt a little too action-y. So it petered into like a three star for me, but that's uh, Ahab's return. Next two books are audiobooks I listen to. The first one is Buy Yourself the Fucking Lilies and Other Rituals to Fix Your Life from Someone Who's Been There by Tara Schuster. This is a like self-care, self-help memoir from a woman in a creative business field. Not gonna lie, I needed this at the time I listened to it. <laughs> I can't guarantee it would work for everyone else, but I, I listened to it at a time I really needed it. I was coming out of a really busy season in work, in my creative work, feeling really burnt out, feeling like I was failing a lot of things. And this helped because, um, this is a very, feels like a very privileged book, I will say that. Um, so this book felt like hashtag girl boss energy. <laughs> it felt like walking into a ridiculously tiny and overly expensive macaron shop. Macaroon? Macaron? And it's all colorful and dainty and everything's beautifully packaged and delicious. And there's so many different colors but they're so expensive and it feels a little outrageous, but you still want it you because it will romanticize your life. Like you just want one macaron, but it also felt like a breath of fresh air on a winter's day. Like it just felt when you get that sudden little tiny millisecond of inspiration in winter when you're outside, all of a sudden you're just like, I feel good. Like the cold energizes you. That's what this book felt like. So I do feel like this book is very privileged. I feel like it is very catered to cis women. It's very privileged. Yeah, basically you have to have money to do some of the self-care stuff that she was giving, like buying yourself the fucking lilies. Um, lilies are expensive. <laughs> so anyway, but there were a lot of things that she talked about that I related to. I don't rate nonfiction anymore unless it's like five trillion gold stars, which is what I say a lot if I really loved something. But um, this one, not gonna rate it, but I needed it and I actually employed some of the tips that she gave and it, it really did help me at a time of need. So and I would compare media wise this book to Radical Self Love by Gala Darling. The other thing I would compare this book to is, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it here. One of Nora Ephron's books that I read where it's a lot of just like listicles. It's insightful, it's a little funny, a little cheeky, but overall, a little lacking in substance and grit. Next I listened to Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. I listened to this because I had just finished re-watching all of Gilmore Girls again and I was really sad. So I was like, oh, I'll listen to Lorelai's memoir because that's Lauren Graham. She plays Lorelai. This felt like interacting with a drama school kid pumped up full of sugar on a field trip and you're like, judging them hardcore because you're like is this your real personality or are you just being so extra because you had a pixie stick like is this your true nature now that you've been given sugar or are you 
over the top now. I felt like putting on a really loose oversized hoodie and just kind of like being swallowed by it still feeling warm and cozy. I would compare this memoir to, I don't know, honestly, I feel like this, I listen to a lot of female comedians and actors memoirs, so just take your pick. It could be like Amy Schumer, Mindy Kaling, um, I'm having such bad brain fog right now. I just didn't leave feeling closer or more, I didn't feel impacted. I did learn things though. I did learn some behind the scenes stuff of Gilmore Girls, which is cool, but overall I didn't feel closer to the person who was writing the memoir. So I feel like that's the whole point of a memoir, to understand them a little bit more. Okay, next on the physical book journey, I read the Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. This is translated by Lowell Bear, cool name. This follows a phantom at an opera house and he is in love with a singer and kidnapping happens. Translated from French, this book felt like childhood adventure, playing hide and seek in a giant castle. It felt like looking really deeply into a classic painting at a museum. Like you just start narrowing in blinders on into a painting and seeing all the different layers. And it felt like the excitement of getting dressed up to go and watch a ballet or an opera at a very decadent theater. Like the, the palpability of that excitement. I would compare this to, I mean, am I allowed to compare this book to anything else? Because this kind of came first over everything else I feel like I'm gonna try to compare it to. I feel like this is like listening to a Baroque music playlist. That's all. I don't know what else to compare it to, uh, media, art-wise. Um, I really liked it. It really surprised me. It was fun. It was easy to read. It was adventurous. It was beautiful. It was dark and creepy. Really liked it. Really liked The Phantom of the Opera. Next I read Graves and A True Ghost Story by Elaine Mercado RN. This is a true ghost story of a woman who is a registered nurse, not a writer, wrote about how when her family moved into a house in Brooklyn, it was haunted in the 80s. True account. Terrifying. <laughs> this book felt like don't read it alone in an Airbnb in the oldest house in the city you're staying in. I'll link that vlog down below. <laughs> this book also felt like when you're sleeping in a bed and there's a door at the foot of your bed that leads into dark stairs leading up to an attic in said Airbnb. I'll link the video down below. No, but in all reality, this book felt like your worst nightmare. <laughs> like moving into a new house, excited by the potential and the possibilities, thinking that this stuff could never happen, allowing yourself to be swept up into the unbelievable if you don't believe in ghosts and stuff or premonitions or anything paranormal. So eerie so creepy this book felt like a conversation with a friend over coffee though in in every form it just felt like i was listening to a friend tell me a story and i, I loved that i really did i would compare this book to and i no longer want to live this life by is it barbara spongen i'll put it here it's the memoir of nancy's mom of sid and nancy not a trained author or writer but she just had a story to tell and wow did she tell it so heartbreaking sad scary everything i love that i love when non-writers write a book and it's a true account of their life and they have a story to share and it's very valid i think that's the only piece of media i'm gonna compare this to because it was just really scary and a memoir so i did love this so much so but it's gonna be like five stars i i really loved this really loved it great memoir I really enjoyed it. Only a few more here, friends. Next, I read The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr. This is about a teenage girl who has no short-term memory. She resets every few hours until she kisses her best friend's boyfriend and all of a sudden she can remember the kiss and she can remember that she's 16 years old and not six or 10 or, or however old she is when her brain injury happened. This book felt like 
falling into a groundhog today. You are so in Flora's head that things are just repeated over and over and over and all the time. It felt nauseating and dizzying and frustrating. Really liked that. This felt like watching a teenager just make really stupid, uncomfortable decisions. Maybe it's your cousin or your sister or a friend who is just so naive, but they wholeheartedly believe that they're doing the right thing. And there's literally nothing you can do because you can't control them, but you're just trying to help in some way. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Ooh, this also felt like when you're a teenager and you're just romanticizing the shit out of everything. It could be a hard day, a hard moment, going on a road trip with people that later in life you realize that you hate, <laughs> but in the moment you're romanticizing it so much. I would compare this book to, I don't read a whole lot of like YA romances, but this is like a psychological thriller YA romance kind of merge. I would say maybe An Ocean of Minutes by Taya Lim, and why not? Shutter Island. Can't remember the author's name, but it's there. So, weird combo, I know, because this is YA, both of those recommendations are not YA, don't go into them thinking they're YA, but that's what I'm gonna give. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I, I actually really enjoyed this. I thought it was compulsively readable. So fun, fast-paced, page-turning, really enjoyable. I really liked it. I was surprised I really liked it. A little forgettable, though. I haven't really thought about this since, but when I look at it and remember it, I'm like, that was just a fun time. So I liked it. And part of it takes place in the Arctic, which I love. I'm always a fan of snowy tundra landscapes, so that's great. Starting to hate this again. <laughs> I can't make it very long. I have two more books I'm gonna just try and fly through because your girl needs to lay down. Frankenstein by Junji Ito. Graphic novel, short stories of horror. Oh, this is translated as well. Translation by Jocelyn Allen. It does start out with a retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and then it goes into Junji Ito's own creation, work, art, story. This book felt like a piece of media or art that you feel like has a hidden meaning about society or environment or mortality or morality, but you just can't figure out what. <laughs> it felt like listening to an urban legend or myth in school and it's scaring you beyond anything else, even though you know it's not rational. And it kind of felt like a bowl of like hot, comforting soup, like when you're sick, which I obviously need right now. My eyes are watering again. Oh, I'm so dry. Everything's so dry in Michigan. Oh my God, why do I live here? <laughs> I would compare this book to White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. I feel like I've read other horror short stories, maybe like the ghost story, you know, everyone knows that one, the ghost stories. I really enjoyed this. I really liked it. Some of the short stories were a little bit of a miss, but the art was so creepy. I just had the biggest coughing fit ever, so it's the last book and then I'm done. Last book I read, Lacrimore, S.J. Costello. I have a whole dedicated reading vlog to this one if you want to watch it and know more. It's about people living in this mansion on this island called Lacrimore. Quirky characters, cast of things, really big, dark themes. Spoiler, I loved it. New favorite book of all time. This book felt like, like a beautiful blue lagoon like just dark blue the hour before it gets completely dark outside when the sky is that beautiful royal blue it feels deliciously melancholic like you want to be sad and it felt like being in a very old castle house that you're visiting on vacation or something with your family and you just imagine living there i would compare this this book gave me the feelings that interstellar gives me where it's like that comfortable sadness like you crave to be that bittersweet and melancholic and writing wise i'm really not sure what to what to compare this to. I'm really not. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like I've read anything similar enough to this. It was just amazing. I loved it. So five stars. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. I, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my brain thoughts. But we did it. We powered through. I just really wanted to talk about these books because I, I loved some of them so much and I want them to be known to the world. Thank you for being here. If you could tolerate my sick voice and the slow talking. Um, I'm, I'm working on like 2% of my normal brain capacity, I feel like. I hope you enjoyed it. I 
hope you enjoyed listening to this different format inspired by CJ Reads. If you did like it, let me know because I would not mind continuing this kind of format or if you'd like more plot like I normally do. Thank you all so much for being here and I'll see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy my friends. Bye!